It was filth. It was filth. So as you know, I've been talking about exploitation cinema a little bit, learning a bit more about it, reading a bit more about it. My interest has been increasing. But I realized that there are so many genres under the exploitation umbrella that I haven't even touched. So I challenged myself to try out 10 different genres of exploitation film that I have never seen that aren't horror or horror adjacent. It was sort of like a sampler, a, a variety pack of exploitation films. So today I'm going to sit down and recap this journey with you, tell you about everything that I watched. You will see that I have talked about these films in my monthly What I Watched videos, so there, these have been discussed or will be discussed in separate videos, but this is the 10 exploitation films that I've isolated particularly as part of this challenge. So are you excited to hear what I watched? Let's jump right in. First thing I tried out was a women in prison film. I watched Black Mama, White Mama. This of course takes place in a women's prison and these two prisoners, a black one and a white one, really uh, don't get along. So as punishment, they end up having to be handcuffed together. And uh, they do manage to escape prison, but are still handcuffed to each other and have to kind of uh, work together to get where they both want to go. It has Pam Greer in it. It also has Sid Haig in it. I thought that it would be kind of an erotic movie. And while it was erotic at the beginning, they kind of just like threw all that out once they broke out of prison. And then it just kind of became more of an action film. But I think it was excellent. And I got this recommendation from Junkmaster3 who did a video on top 10 women in prison films. And that's kind of what got my interest in the genre to begin with. But yeah, that was good. And I think I would like to try more women in prison films in the future. Next up was a black exploitation sampling. Now, while I have seen a handful of black exploitation films, they've all been horror related, such as Blackula. So for this, I chose Coffee, which is more of like an action slash crime film. And the reason I chose this is because Tubi recommended it to me after I watched Black Mama, White Mama. And then it showed up on my doorstep when Brian sent me some DVDs. So that one was meant to be. Coffee is about this girl, this lady who's a nurse by day, but then by night, she's on this quest to kill all the drug dealers that played a hand in her sister ODing. So it's like a revenge film kind of. So she's out there just being a badass and it's really, really cool. She's out there inserting herself like into the world of drugs and prostitution for the sake of revenge. So love to see more black exploitation of all kinds. So I'm interested to continue diving into that. So if you have any recommendations, let a ho know. And next, it was time for Hicksploitation. This interests me specifically because I live in the Deep South with Hicks. I'm a bit nervous about this genre because I just feel like it might be a bit rapey, but I chose a 1938 film from the Grindhouse Database website. I was just interested to see how Hicks would be portrayed in the 30s. So I chose Child Bride. Because this is a 30s film, it also would fall under probably cautionary film genre because there is definitely like a moral agenda here. This film is about like mountain, rural mountain folks. Like, so it's really kind of a hillbilly movie. This one lady who lived in the town, she went out and got educated and then she came back to teach. And she decided that she wanted to kind of help modernize the town. Uh, namely stopping the marrying off of very young girls. But in this movie, you see a family that is kind of forced to marry off their 12 year old. And even though she's 12, she even seems much younger. This film is sort of hard to review, I guess, because it's, it's controversial. It's very controversial even to this day because the nudity featured in the film and of the age 
of the person who is nude in the film. I don't think I have to explain that anymore. So because of that, it seems silly for me to say yay or nay, but I thought it was a really watchable film and I do think it's so interesting to watch movies that are this old because you're like, all these people are dead. They're all dead. I do want to try more exploitation. I'm going to have to, even though I'm kind of treading into iffy territory. Next up is nunsploitation. Boy, I was excited for this one because I love nuns. I selected the killer nun. Come to find out, it's also a giallo. So this is about this nun who works in a hospital and she's having some problems with her mind. And uh, people are also dying at the hospital and just lo it looks like um, all fingers are pointing to her. So again, it's a mystery of trying to find out like who is the killer or what is happening here. This film stars Anita Ekberg and I thought she was fantastic. If you like her even the least little bit, it's worth seeing this movie for her performance. It is awesome. Nunsploitation, as far as I understand, is supposed to be a film that is showing nuns doing things that nuns should not do. This film definitely fit those parameters. We get some sex, we get some drugs, we get some homosexuality. Oh, and some murder. So yeah, it was a fun flick for sure. I want to see many, many, many more nunsploitation films. Recommendations below. Next, space exploitation. I haven't been in space yet. I went over to Andrew Liverod's huge exploitation movie list. Oh, that's also where I got Killer Nun from. Andrew Liverod on Letterboxd. He has everything categorized and all that. So I looked on his space exploitation list and I was like, Star Crash, that looks nice. So I just picked that one at random. A few familiar faces in that film. It's just, you know, it's just about like these two criminals who get basically hired by the emperor to find and eliminate the evil count to save the universe. It's like kind of a generic plot. And the story isn't necessarily why you'd be watching this movie. It's really just for like the space atmosphere and the visuals. I thought it was really fun. Our leading lady was super hot and dressed in skimpy outfits the whole time. So there's just plenty of eye candy, whether it's the different colored stars or the babe in the skimpy outfit. There's plenty to be seen. Ah, next I decided to watch Shark Shark Exploitation, which is funny because I haven't even seen Jaws. Is this my first shark movie? Probably. So I went on Andrew Liverod's list of shark exploitation, and um, when I saw Franco Nero's face, I was like, that, that one. Plus it was the 70s, and that's like, that's where I was aiming to stay most, most of the time was like 60s and 70s. So I went with the Shark Hunter. Uh, this is definitely Franco looking his best, looking his finest with that blonde hair. <laughs> And this is the most likable character I have seen him play thus far. He didn't punch a single lady in the face. Amazing. Good job, honey. So the Shark Hunter is about this mysterious white guy living in Mexico, just kind of keeping to himself. And he hunts sharks, but he's actually got his eye on something else beneath the ocean's surface. All he needs is to find a partner. And we'll just leave it at that. I mean, this is just a good solid movie. It definitely had like a made for TV feel to it, but it was a fun time and there's enough shark action to appease the shark lover. And the soundtrack needs to be mentioned. It is very repetitive and overpowering. I know some of us really like that, me included. This was definitely a great one. And I do want to see more shark movies. Oh, I almost skipped one. Nazi exploitation. I wasn't sure how I was going to choose my Nazi exploitation movie. Actually, I'm not really sure why this genre exists, but I guess that's exploitation for you. They take a topic that makes people feel some type of way, some type of way, and they cash in on it. So that's what this is, Nazi exploitation. So I got on Andrew Liverod's list on Letterboxd and I was kind of like reading the descriptions of some of these films and I realized 
All of these seem highly unpleasant. I don't think I'm going to enjoy any of these. Which one should I pick? And then I saw this one with a girl on the cover and I was like, well, maybe if I get like a girl one, <laughs> then it'll be like a little more girl friendly. So I went with Ilsa, she wolf of the SS. And it, it was not girl friendly. Um, I don't recommend this. This movie is about this like female SS officer who has this theory that women can handle more pain than men. So she wants to conduct experiments on women to test that theory with the end goal of putting women on the front lines as soldiers, um, which sounds girl power and all, except it means that uh, this is going to be a movie of torturing women. Oh, and this also would be considered sex exploitation, so it's sex exploitation and Nazi exploitation. Mm. I just, I'm very uncomfortable at the fact that they would combine so much sex with the Holocaust. How much sex can be had in one concentration camp? <laughs> it was filth. It was just filth. The performances were good, but it was really just a collage of torture and sex. Just back and forth. Uh, I don't think I want to see any more Nazi exploitation movies. We'll just leave it at that. Moving on. Next, it was time for a biker film. I was apprehensive about this genre as well because it just, I just feel like biker films might get rapey. I don't know. I had trepidation. But then I saw this movie called She Devils on Wheels. And I, I don't even know where, oh, I just found it. When I was looking for She Wolf of the SS, She Devils on Wheels came up on Tubi. So that's where I got that one from. This was incredibly low budget. I loved it. It was about this girl gang who like just treats guys like objects and just does whatever they want. It was so funny because it was like very, very censored. Like even the orgies were rated G in this movie. It was hilarious, but it was really cute. It was really lovable. And I do plan to watch more biker films. Okay, next was the Chambara slash Yakuza film. And I went with Lady Snowblood as per Grindhouse Database. I was so excited for this. This was so beautiful. It was so beautiful that I cried a little bit. It's just visually stunning and it's very girl power and uh, just so stylishly shot. This is a Japanese movie. It's about this lady who was born, she's like a child of vengeance. So she's born with one purpose in life, and that is to kill the people responsible for killing her family. So when she gets old enough, she's trained her whole life, she goes out into the world to seek out these people. And she's such a badass, it is so cool. This film is so stylish, and it's based on a manga, so it has this kind of like campy, comic book feel to it. I don't know if I've seen any exploitation from Japan, but it's it's so next level. The blood, like if anyone gets cut or stabbed or anything, the blood just gushes like a geyser. I adored that. It's like and just sprays everywhere. Hell yeah. That was great. Lady Snowblood was really, really good. And finally, I went for a spaghetti western. So I asked on Instagram for recommendations and Saku, God, I hope I said your name right. I don't, I don't know, said for a few dollars more. And hello, I'm from the 90s, said fish full of dollars. And I was like, I, I don't know what that is, but maybe he was talking about dollars and Saku was talking about dollars. Maybe they both knit for a few dollars more. So I started for a few dollars more and then my coworker was like, oh, that's part two of a trilogy. The first part is fistful of dollars. And then I was like, that's what fishful means. So then I stopped for a few dollars more and went for 
fistful of dollars. This is a Clint Eastwood film and it's a spaghetti western but it just feels very very American. I was hoping for something that just felt a bit more Italian but um, it, it just was western. It was just a western. It was just a bunch of dudes and guns and they're all sweaty and then it was over. <laughs> I'll probably watch another, but I'm just not a Western girl. And that's okay. Okay, it has taken me several takes to make this video. Hopefully, I said everything that I needed to say. I'm, I'm losing my voice. So, that was my grand sampling of different types of exploitation films. It was really fun. I was really starting to enjoy the challenge. It just felt good about getting all that variety. Like, I feel like I'm cultured. I might do this again. I could do another 10 in the future. So I would love suggestions, ideas, things of that nature in the comments. And I just hope you enjoyed the recap from this girl who hasn't seen anything. If this is your first time to my channel, I am changing gears so that I'm talking about horror, giallo, other exploitation cinema, B-movies in general, a little bit of heavy metal or extreme metal, just media, okay? So if that sounds good to you, come back and see me. And until then, ciao for now.